Hey, this is John. Welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Here with Stephen Hood, and uh, and today we're going to be talking about uh, base mount of pump alignments using a dial indicator. Uh, Stephen uh, Stephen is actually an account manager for us there, Margie, and uh, he sold this job uh, installing two uh, centrifugal chillers and uh, a few condenser and chill water pumps. And uh, we're, we've done a rough alignment, and then we're going to go through and do uh, do some fine alignment with uh, dial indicators. That's Steven, tell me what we got going on here. So we're going to do a precision alignment on a Takeo pump that we installed. Uh, common misbelief is that these pumps, as they come in, are already aligned and ready to go. You grout them and go. Uh, the truth is, no manufacturer actually uh, does a precision alignment from the factory. It has to be done in the field uh, prior to startup. So we're going to go through and do a uh, two dial indicators and a horizontal method to attempt to get this thing aligned and make sure it looks good. Hey Steve, before you get going, what are the some of the tools that you need in order to, to do a proper alignment? Just so so you'll need have a, everything ready. Yeah. You'll need a shim kit. Uh, you'll need two dial indicators. We're using a Scarret uh, brand that we can actually mount to the shaft. You'll need some ratchet wrenches or uh, wrenches where you can take the motors off and usually a pry bar and a rubber mallet. It's always good to put safety first. Uh, anytime you're dealing with any kind of movable object, you wanna make sure it's locked out. You wanna test it, make sure it doesn't come on before you put your hands anywhere near the moving parts. So at this point, we have already done a rough alignment. Uh, we use a straight edge to go across. And what you wanna do is just take your shims and put it on your stationary and see what you can get to go underneath there without too much resistance. So it's just barely touching. Then you put that amount of shims under each leg and you check for soft foot. After you've done that, you'll go through and tighten it up and you'll want to put in your Scarret um, dial indicators on, okay. uh, both the stationary and movable. Um, once you get that set and going, you're ready to roll. Uh, first thing you want to do is we've actually got an app that you can use. Um, Fixture Laser does this and you'll go through and do the measurements. Um, and as you can see here, we've got it set up very similar to what they've got, stationary, movable. It's easier for me to work on this side because I'm looking at it just like it is in the picture. So go through and first take your measurements and put these in. And once you get done with that, it'll take you to the next step. So if you want to, go ahead and take me a measurement there, okay. Graham. And we're looking at five and three quarters here. Okay, so you'll put that inside here. It'll then go ahead and calculate halfway between for you. Then you wanna do from your front here on your movable to your center line of this leg. So if you wanna go ahead and give me a measure from center to center of here. Okay. Which I believe was five and a quarter. Yes, it, yep. 0.25. And then we're gonna do a measurement between center and center of your motor. And like I said, it makes it really easy. Gives you a step-by-step. -step. Now, this is a unique item here. You can go ahead and put in what you're working on. In this, this case, you're working on chill water pump number two. So you can name it and save it. Now you're gonna to want to rotate. And you can see here, you're watching your, your stationary and movable dials as you're doing it. And you're just gonna roll it over, which we're gonna roll it this way. And you're gonna take it over here to the nine o'clock. And right now we're adjusting our dials to zero. Do a quick little bump test after you get it set in. And they're very sensitive, so so I kind of bump it there. You got your set, Graham. But the beauty of doing this method here is you don't have to have this going down to your six o'clock. So if you had something in the way, it could actually go through and hit. This way, you only have to do from side to side to top and get that true center line measurement. Gotcha. All right, we've got that set to zero. Now, visually, it's going to tell you rotate over to the three o'clock. And as you're doing that, if you'll watch this one, Graham, okay. I'll watch this one. You're wanting to maintain and see if it's going positive or negative. That way you know which direction the indicators are going. Going in the negative. 
you on positive now. Okay, we'll show you on this one here. So what we're reading at, what do you got there? Looks like about 37. 37. So you want to cut that reading in half. This is your total indicator reading. You want to cut that TIR in half. So that'd be 17 and a half. The reason you do that is it doesn't matter what point of your shaft you're on. I mean, this thing could be flipped up here and that could be vertical. Shaft to shaft, it's round. So as long as you're getting a point here and another point here, it doesn't matter about getting the top and bottom because you know what that uh, true center line is once you've done this. Uh -huh. what, so, is the, what does the half number read mean? So when you're going through the app, obviously you're putting your whole measurement in, but it's asking you to cut that in half. Is there any particular reason for that? Yes, the reason they do that, it gives you true live readings of okay. what's happening on the shafts. Both shafts are active and live at that point. Okay. You know exactly where you need to be. Gotcha. So we've cut it in half. Now we're gonna rotate it back up. to the top. And one thing you gotta look out for, and I don't know, John, you may be able to zoom in here and see this on the indicator, but you've got what they call deflection. So you can see as I'm turning that, that's just a wiggle in the shaft. So you do have to account for that as you're doing this. So it tends to want to go that way and I'll usually just kind of hold it back as I'm doing it. So you you just manipulate that? Well, I'm just, I can, you can see the shaft, it moves mm -hmm. as I'm doing that. I'm just trying to keep it from moving as much. Okay. Let me see what I All right, so once you've done that and you've watched it come up and you've cut it in half, like it says, then you're gonna take it back and it's gonna put in what the stationary reading is mm -hmm. on this side. So what is that? The stationary reading is about positive one. Okay. And it looks like mine is, let me just go back for a second. Okay, mine was going positive as well. So that's about a positive 28. So I got a negative 18 on this side. So as you can see here, it's pretty far out and it'll tell you what you've got going on here. So you got some misalignment, angular, and horizontal. So it'll tell you what to take out of there. So when the arrow's going out like this, it's telling you take away 79 thousandths out of the front and 135 thousandths, or mils, out of the back. Okay, and, th and that th those are the shims that we're pulling That's pulling the shims out. that we're pulling out. Okay, so we've kind of roughly shimmed it and now we're gonna fine, fine shim, shim it. Yes. Okay. Steven, you mentioned soft foot before and trying to figure out, you know, where your soft foot is and, and, and put a measurement to it. Right. So as you're doing it, just like when you do the rough alignment, you do your first soft foot check. And with that. So what is soft foot? Soft foot is where you may have a little bit of deflection in the metal itself that actually will bow this. So if you try to tighten it down without correcting for it, you're actually moving that motor out when what you really should do is try to find a shim that'll go through it gotcha. to keep this from moving. So you're kind of putting it in tension. Right. Taking it out of tension and laying it flat. Exactly. And a lot of times what you'll find is if, let's say we're, we're loose here, you're going to have the same looseness over here. It'll mm -hmm. travel back and forth. All right, so we have already adjusted for our shims and taken out what we needed. At this point, you want to go through and do a horizontal alignment. And we're going to be using the near, near, far, far method. So bolts closest to the front here, you would use this indicator to tell you negative or positive. And you would use this back indicator here to move the back negative or positive. You're achieving, what you want to achieve is zero across the board. So near, near, far, far, you're talking near, near, far, far. That's right. correct. Gotcha. And that's how you know which indicator to look at as you're trying to beat it around. So right now I'm looking and I've got uh, a negative two on this one. Yep, zero. What you got over, over there? Over here you got a positive uh, 12. Okay. Going more, it's about a positive 15. There you go, you're about a positive two. I'm watching these other ones as he's doing it just to see. Oh, you're going into the negative, negative two, negative one. It's a 
little bit more, a little bit more. There you go, zero. Okay, and all right, zero, still zero. Still zero. So at this point, you're going to want to lock this down. I like going in a pattern, and I'll tighten up, and I'll say this is one, and do a cross pattern. And what you want to do is do that three times over. So get it snug, go across, hit the front, do that one. That's your first time. And you do second time through. And then on your final, you want to be locked down. At that point, you're going to want to recheck your alignment and see uh, how close you got. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on uh, Mechanical Pros. That was how to uh, do pump alignment on a base mounted pump with uh, dial indicators. Uh, hope you liked it. Uh, hit that like, hit the subscribe, and we'll check out next time.